حبيبي يا قلوبنا وطبيبي نفوسنا رحمه للعالمين للقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد والصلاه والسلام على اهل البيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين ولعنة الله على اعداء اجمعين اللهم كن لوليك الحجه والحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى ابائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعلما حتى تسكنه ارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اما بعد السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام All praise and glory belong to Allah, the creator of this universe. The one who out of his mercy and without wanting anything in return gave the potential for each creation to reach its peak or its perfection. There is no creation out there that Allah Taala created which can have an objection on the Day of Judgment or in front of Allah Taala that you did not give me enough. The reason why we chose this particular topic, which uh, I think it should be, maybe I should say it instead of you wondering what the topic is, although we've been talking to you for the last six or seven days. From the things that I've mentioned to you, what we're trying to do is understand our own selves, understand the world that we live in, understand the correlation or connection that we have with the world so that we have a little bit of a better idea of what religion is and other things that are related to us. We had spoken to you about illusions that we have in this world. I don't know if you keep up to what you mentioned. But, um, illusions are due to the fact that um, we have some preconceived perception that have been given to us as we grew up. So according to those preconceived perceptions, we look at the world. And whatever is our perception is our reality. So that you might have heard of that in English, they use that. And a person's perception is their reality. In order for reality to change, a person's perception has to change. As soon as the perception changes, the reality changes. It's a good connection. Some people try to change reality. You can't change reality. Some people try to change reality. You can't change reality. What reality is, it is. If you want to make a difference and you want reality to change, you have to change the perception. If you change the perception of someone, their reality automatically is going to change. If you carry, carry on with the reality part of it and you don't work on the perception, then things are never going to change. Okay? So in order for us to be able to have a little bit of better understanding of our own selves, we need to change our perception. And somebody has to change that for us, or at least help us to change it. So the reason why we see things is because of our perception. Now, uh, we spoke about that Allah SWT has created this whole creation of His in different realms, and in each realm there is an existence of the same thing with a different shape and form that exists, right? It's not too sci-fi, I hope, like, like I've tried to, to explain it a little bit. If you want more explanation, we can give, like, it's not a problem. In front of you, there are so many different universes that are existing at the same time, but uh, you are not perceiving it. For example, um, and this outer body of mine is kind of like a universe. It's pretty big compared 
when you compare it, when the ant looks at me, it's a huge, it's a universe. Okay. When the ant looks at me, I'm a giant. When the ant looks at me, I'm a giant. It's like Mount Everest, bigger than Mount Everest. So to that end, compared to that end, I myself, I'm a universe. I'm a mountain, I'm a Mount Everest. I'm someone as a giant. True enough? If you go inside uh, and you go on the molecular level or, you know, uh, the white blood cells are another uniform, uh, universe, the white blood cells, the proteins, Yes, uh, probably didn't see that uh, there was a movie they made uh, where they miniature a person on the ship and then they put that inside of the person and they go through the brain and the stomach and all. I guess uh, if you didn't see the movie, it is probably going to be possible in a few years. The nanomite technology uh, is going to probably work that way, that there will be little, little nanomites that will be put into the side of the body of a person, they will go and attack the cancer cells and the person's cancer will be gone. So, you have this and then you have inside, you have another universe, if you are, if you are going to perceive it to the molecular level. Okay. So, well, how is it that uh, one person is existing in different realms? Why is that? It is because of your perception. You're not able to see me in all of those realms. You can only see me in one. With me? You can see me only in one. You cannot see me unless you had like eyes or vision that could see, you know, like Superman has that you can see the inside of you. Unless you add that, then you'll see all the molecules and proteins and so forth. To go further, there's a third realm too where I exist and that is on atomic level. On the atomic level, I exist as well, but you cannot perceive me on that. But I exist at the moment. Atoms and nucleus, and you guys have protons, electrons. Okay. With me so far? Yeah. Okay. I exist even, there's another universe, so, so far it's three, right? This physical body, molecular, atomic. The fourth level I exist on is even smaller than atoms. Uh, it's called quark. I exist even on that realm too, but you can't perceive me. If you want to go further, I just even in another universe, and that is a universe made up of strings that are even smaller than quarks. So right in front of you is a person, but you are only seeing that person in one realm, although this person is existing in how many different, how many different universes? Five. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And that's only five. There's infinite number of universes that Hassan is existing in, but you can't perceive it. And at one time. And you too. So when you start thinking of that, what happens is that in a person's mind, the importance of this body and Maintaining this body and all the livelihood and all the worldlyhood and all the loves that you have and all the restrictions that you feel and all the limitation that you feel and all the um, stress and constraint and I'm nothing and all of this <coughs> should be lifted. That you are a lot more than what you perceive. And as, as you perceive of yourself more and more, your horizon is going to expand, you're going to see things differently, right? You're going to feel differently, you're going to feel a little bit maybe 
closer to the ultimate truth? Or no? It's okay. Uh, five foot something, black hair, brown eyes, right? Beard, white hair, dress. Oh, I'm okay in this universe. People who are stuck in this universe, who cannot see the other universes, cannot do much. They cannot do much. All they can do, um, basically eat, drink, be happy, have wife, kids, job, house, live to be 60, 70, 80 years old and die. And for them, this is all life is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the potential and the guidance that we have been received by Ahl al-Bayt and Rasulullah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so much. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That you and I do not need to limit ourselves just on that. Right? There's a lot more than we can achieve with the same things that have been given to us. Could you imagine if you could see me on the molecule level on as right now and on the atomic level <coughs> on the string level at the same time? Could you imagine that? Your, your perception would change, right? Then your reality would change. When your perception changed, your reality changed, you would need to find a place of religion of Qur'an, of fasting, of namaz, in that perception. Right? Like your salah, it has a physical form, but it has another form. That other form of salah, if you could see, it's very different. There was a person, uh, it was narrated, uh, he was praying the mass, and uh, it was narrated through um, the individuals that I do trust, and it was authenticated, so therefore I'm mentioning it to you. Although it might seem a little bit strange, but. So there was a person praying the mass, he was saying, and then he was going to say, this is Bab, right? So before he could say this Bab, the, the earth underneath him opened and he left. So he was praying the march. So he, he was on the verse which said, And then he was going to say, bah. The earth underneath opened, he went inside, and there was another universe where he lived for years and years and years. And after that, he came back to the same namaz where he continues saying, وَإِيَّاكَ right. So what was the time period in this world? It was just to sing, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ wa Just this wa, وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Just this wa he said in this universe, and in another universe he lived for years. So one day of uh, the day of judgment is of how many of hours? Or one day of the day of judgment is how many of hours? Thousand years. Yeah, one thousand or fifty thousand years. You guys should know that. Should be on the quiz or something. One day of that universe is equal to fifty thousand or one thousand years. Do you see? Uh, your perception is changing a little bit? No, it hasn't. <laughs> you also know that Shaitan worshipped Allah for 6,000 years. 4,000 years, he just prayed to Rakat Namaz. So it took him 4,000 years to pray to Rakat Namaz. Now, Imam Ali al-Satusam, he says that we do not know whether these years that out of the 4,000, these years are of this earth, or are of that world, or that universe. 
where that in that universe one day is equal to let's say fifty thousand years or one thousand years. So just for argument's sake, we'll say one thousand years. Right? So Shaitan worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than any you and I can ever worship him. And he's still alive. He's continue. No one can have maybe bigger, longer life than him. True? With all of that worship and all of that life and all of the opportunities, what did he do? He disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. min al kafirin He was from Akbar, from someone who's an unbeliever. He's cursed for eternity. For Shaitan, couldn't his reality change in a matter of moments? He would have saved his 6,000 years of worship. He would have been still maybe the prince of the angels. He would still be there. What was the moment that it took him? When Allah said, do the prostration, no, I'm not going to do it. This no, I'm not going to do it changed everything. In our own lives, our lives, they change on moments. And these moments are connected to so many different realms of universes where the ripple effects of each decision that you make takes effect. So when you start looking at the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be that important that they have an everlasting effect, you would think twice and I would think twice to break those laws. But if I just think the law is, oh, my mom has said pray namaz, okay, I pray namaz, or my dad is saying pray namaz, I'll pray namaz, or I'll pray namaz because I, other people are watching, or I'll pray namaz because I want to go to heaven, or I'll pray namaz because... I do not want to go to hell. I'll pray namaz because of those reasons. I'm taking religion at a very lower level. I'm not understanding that this namaz of mine has a ripple effect in all of those realms where I exist and it has an effect on it. The zikr that you do, the Quran that you recite, the fasting that you do, the tasbih that you do, all of these things are connected in such a way there are infinite number of ripples that they create. Just as infinite number of ripples are created when we sin. In the grave when we are going to have those snakes come and bite us, they are our creation. In this universe, in the three dimensions, right? I just said, I don't like you. Who are you? Who do you think you are? In this tone of voice. And in the universe of the grave, a snake is born. Isn't it different perception? And it is different because you are seeing me in this three dimension, you're not watching me in the molecular level, you're not watching me on the atomic level, you're not watching me on the quark level, you're not watching me on the string level. True? This is something right in front of you. This example you cannot say that I can, I know I don't understand it. It's very easy. So when you hurt someone's feelings, when you do ghibat, when you do chokal kore, like chokal kore, tale telling, when we lie, when we do all of these things and you hurt other people's feelings, in the realm of the grave, these snakes and scorpions are born. When you say subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar, when you say that, in this universe there is an effect. In the universe of the molecules there is an effect. The universe on the atomic level there is an effect. At the universe of quark level there is an effect. In the universe of string level there is an effect. In the level of barzakh or heaven there is an effect. How far the effect is going? When the Prophet came back from Miraj, there are certain things that he told us 
uh, about what he saw over there. You probably heard of this before. The Prophet said that I saw the angels constructing a house or houses. The narration is also with the trees too, but we spoke about trees yesterday quite a bit so today. So, the Prophet said, I saw the angels, they were making the houses in heaven. And they would work and then they would stop. They would work and then they would stop. They would work, they would stop. Like you know how some employees are, and they'll do like five minutes of work and then they switch it to the FIFA or the, you know, on the web or whatever, you know. Keep on switching back and forth from work to break. So these angels are doing the same thing. And the Prophet said to them, you know, because it's kind of odd, angels should not do that, right? A human being should not do that either, but you know, expect it, kya to ghalti ke putle, hamne ye kaam hai sikhar diya, it's okay, but angels, this is not right. They should be hard workers, work all the time and, you know, consistently, don't take breaks, no cheating and so forth. So the Prophet said, why are you guys doing that? And they said that, in the world, when somebody says, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah, wa Allah, we start constructing the house. And when they stop, we stop. So as soon as they say again, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah, wa Allah, we start working again. See the effect? In how many universes it is going through? How many timelines it is crossing no. till where it is reaching and in which form it is reaching. Here, the words is just sound waves. No? SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Ilaha Illallah, Wa Allah, Wa Akbar. And a Tota can also do this. Eh? Tota? <coughs> a Parat can also do this. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah, but, but when the parrot says it, there is no effect in that universe. It doesn't reach that far out. It doesn't have a construction of a house. The angels are not working for the parrot. The angels are working for you and I. Because we do not see that, and our perception is limited, and we have all of these curtains in front of us, because we do not see that, to us there is not enough motivation to submit to His will, or to stay away from the wrong. But if those curtains go away, if those curtains go away, the beauty of reciting, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, <coughs> And as you're reciting in all of the universes, you can see the effect of it till the last point where the angels are picking up those bricks of gold and silver and making your house. Would you stop saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah? Could anyone stop? No. Would you say, no, no, okay, let me just watch a little bit of FIFA and then I'll start saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Ilaha Illallah, Allah. You say, no, 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 let me, let, let me talk to this guy first and then I will say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. Will you ever do that? No. But why do we do that? No, it's because we do not see. Otherwise, you will not waste a second of your life in things that does not have an everlasting effect. This is our nature. We do not want to spend a second in something that is not everlasting. This is our nature. This is our fitrat. Fitrat is different than tabi'ah. We don't have time to go into different, what is the... Just tabi'ah, if you want to look at it, just look at it as an animal. And fitrat is a human being. Okay, if you were to take the embodiment of the Vyas, is the embodiment of the Vyas is an animal, it's instinct. The, you know, we ask each other, the Vyas ka kya hai? We're so basically asking the person, is your nose okay? 
you know, no, no nazla zukam, no khansi zukam, no ear infection, no heart problems, just some like every tabiat. Right? So basically, tabiat is all your instincts, and fitrat is actually your humanity. There's a very big difference. We don't, we don't, can't mix the two together, right? So it is our fitrat that we want to do something which is everlasting. We do not want to do something which only has a very small timeline effect. Because this humanity that God has given to us, Allah SWT has given to us, this fitrat that is given to us, it is His fitrat. Fitrat Allah illati fatran nasa alayha la tabdila li khalqillah. It is his fitrat that we have, and God does not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do something that is not everlasting. Whatever he has done is actually everlasting. Even if you see the effect on in one universe to be not there, which is everlasting, it never stops. With me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done everything that He has done, it is everlasting, although in reality there is only one being that is everlasting, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest of the creations are to end. So this end is relative to time and space. If there is no time and space, there is no such thing as end. If there is no time and space, there is no such thing as end, and there is no such thing as beginning. Right? But other than everything else, there is a beginning and end, but if you look at his creation, he has created everything in a, in a fashion, in a manner that is everlasting. Even infinity is relative, so we don't want to go on there, and then you have issue, right? So. It is in our nature to do something everlasting, but we do not, we are involved, we are, we get involved in things that are not everlasting. Or are they? If you understand the beginning part of what I just said, Allah SWT has created everything, and it is everlasting. All the effects in one universe might end up, there is another effect in the other universe that continues. Right? So watching people, does that have an everlasting effect? Yes. That's why I said, if you understood what I said before. Our negative actions and our positive actions, or should I say, every action that we take has an everlasting effect. Every movement that we make has an everlasting effect. Every thought that comes to your mind has an everlasting effect. And that effect doesn't go away. It can change, but it doesn't go away. Like when a person sins, uh, their soul, they say, it becomes dark. There is a dark spot from the person's soul when they sin. And if they don't repent, it just continues. Yeah. So as more sins that I have committed, my soul has become darkened. I'll say, Allah SWT, please forgive me. And if I say sincerely, He has forgiven me. I know He has. When you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're, we're going to come back here. When you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not have suizan with Allah. Do not do suizan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a crime. If you pray to Allah, have husnizan. Know that Allah SWT has listened and this will be that way. That if I say Astaghfirullah, I need to have Husnizan with Allah SWT that He has forgiven me. No matter how many sins I've done. 
Y que no te subes a nuestro amor. You don't understand that? I'll give you an example. You know, there was a city, and um, we're, we're coming back to it. We, there was a city, and they didn't have rain, so they, all the Muttaki Bures got all the pious, righteous people, and they were told to go and pray for the city so that they can have rain. So all of them, they went, and there was a child who followed them, but he um, started with them and then went back home and grabbed an umbrella and then walked with them. Do you get it? The Muttaki Parezgar people did not have your keen conviction that their prayers are going to be accepted, otherwise they should be going with an umbrella. Yeah. They didn't have any umbrellas in their hands. They just left. And this child, who had trust in the Muttaki Parezgar people, that their du'as are definitely going to be accepted, went with them with an umbrella. When you pray to Allah subhanahu wa be convinced that He will accept your prayers and He will forgive. So, when I say that Allah forgive me, He has forgiven me. Now, what happens to my soul though? It becomes clean. Remember, it has become blackened. So, does it become clean? Is it the same way as it was before or there is a bit of shade of color is different? You know like you have clothes and you, have, you get stains, you get the best stain remover, put it in the washing machine, what happens? Stain goes away but still there is a little bit of effect. Until the cloth is there, that effect stays. So yes, when I ask for forgiveness in this holy month, my, my sins are going to be forgiven. But the effects of those sins are going to continue staining my soul. And that's not going to go away. There might be some good deeds that I have to do that would reverse the effect of that. But those good deeds would have to be to the point of maybe sacrificing your own self for the sake. Doing something that would affect millions of people. Success. So when we sin, do not take your sins lightly. Because remember, whatever you're going to do is going to have an everlasting effect. And no matter, even if you say, you know, Allahumma akhfir, Allahumma akhfir, Allahumma akhfir, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And if you are going to read the Ayyubman and ask Allah SWT for forgiveness, yes, your sins will be forgiven. You're not going to be liable for the punishment of the Alphaya, where you as a person are stained. Do not stain yourselves. I am ashamed of all the stains that I have. And to go in front of Allah SWT with those stains, it's embarrassing. If it was not the mercy of the Holy Prophet, and I'm a Muslim, and I'm Salaam, I could never show up on the Day of Judgment in front of them. It is because of their intercession that I will have something on the Day of Judgment to stand. Otherwise, I will have nothing. Although my sins would be forgiven, my stains would still be there. And I would be embarrassed in front of everyone. But it is their mercy that they will hide that. They will give me honor. They will give me that light which nobody will be able to see my stains. Everyone is going to be in need of that intercession. Everyone. And we cannot bank on the fact that we will get it when our prayers are not in order. 
when we are sinning and not asking for forgiveness, when, when we are not doing our responsibility, it is after you've done your responsibility, it is after you've done your Vajra prayers, it is after you've done the worship, it is after you've asked for forgiveness, it is after you've given homes, it is after you've done hijab, it is after you've done all of the responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on you, you will not be able to stand in front of Allah with your head up. It is their intercession that is going to help you. And they will not intercede for individuals who have not done their responsibility in this world. Far be it doing the responsibility. If we take the responsibility lightly, they don't intercede for us. The sixth Imam said, anyone who takes the prayers lightly will have no intercession from us on the day of judgment. <coughs> who are we fooling and who are we, um, you know, who are we going to deceive other than our own selves? Thinking that I can do all the Gunahani Kabira. You know, I can do all the greater sins, I can commit all the atrocities, and then on the Day of Judgment, Imam Ali is going to save me. Or I can commit all of those things, and then I can just do a majlis for Imam Hussain, and then, you know, I'm going to be okay. You do the majlis for Imam Hussain, you cry, yes, your sins are forgiven, but those effects of on your soul are not going to go away. They're always going to haunt you till... And then if those effects continue, guess what you're going to do? Again, the same thing over and over again. So inshallah, if Allah SWT will, uh, in this blessed month, I will stay in Tukiri Moon. Maybe the effects will still be there. But there's nothing short in his mercy that even right now he could have the loved ones that he has to intercede for us. May Allah SWT give us the opportunity that the Imam of the time when he prays, and he prays in this month, he prays for Allah SWT that when he puts his hands up, That in those prayers, there is a prayer for you and I. That he remembers us in his prayers. And that intercession which we can get in this life from our own Imam, may we get it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh.